Thank you for auditing the Always Positive New Music Review Show, hosted by a French professor who is excited to talk about the new album, Bo Jackson, by Boldy James and The Alchemist. I just got a comment on a previous video saying, Sky, you've been sleeping on Boldy James, and it's true. I have been sleeping on him. He's released a lot of albums lately, and based on what I've heard on this project, I like his style quite a bit. First of all, my kind of traditional caveat that I just want to put out there, you know, I, I am an older rap fan, you know, I, I've liked rap ever since I first heard the Fat Boys back in the 80s, you know, um, and, and as an older rap fan, my tendency is always to say, you know, you know, that things were only good back in the day, man. Back in the old school, that's when it was good. Now all you're hipping and hopping and mumbling and trapping. Um, this is a golden era of hip hop that we're living in right now. And it's very clear to some old dude who's just paying a lot of attention. It seems as though a lot of it is built on the idea that there are so many high quality producers who are just producing so many good beats that it's like there's not enough quality rappers to rap over them. And then at the same time, there's so many quality rappers that can't possibly be enough people to produce enough beats. And they're finding each other. And, and it's just this really great moment. And I'm just happy to be living through it. I'm happy to have this channel and, and help myself understand much better sort of the, this great moment in hip hop that we're living in. Certainly the producer on this is a good example of that new school of production, The Alchemist. I yeah, put him up there, you know, with Conductor Williams and Derringer and these other guys who are just, just, I mean, the, the image I have is of just like some basement uh, with like a sweatshop. And these guys are just there, just, just chained to a computer and they're just making these great, smoky, gauzy, 70 underground, 70s underground beats at all times. And then we have Boldy James. So I didn't know anything about him. I didn't know he was from Detroit. I didn't know what he was about. I, I you know, he's a, appeared on a few albums I've reviewed from Griselda, you know, and their crew. Um, but this is, I'm gonna say something here, and I don't think it's understood enough. I think with time and space, we will be able to appreciate this very simple fact. Crack rap is weird. It's really, really weird. Okay, I'm not talking about the phenomena of all of these good little capitalists going out and exploiting labor and making lots of money. I'm not talking about that. You know, that's the basis of the crack trade. I'm not interested in the actual selling of crack and its horrible implications and how it traces back to Ronald Reagan and all that stuff, okay? I'm not interested in talking about the destruction of the ghetto, the intentional destruction of the ghetto and the intentional targeting that prison system, all that stuff, which needs to be discussed, and I'm not gonna discuss here. I'm just talking about crack rap, the words, just the words. <laughs> There's this like linguistic arms race between crack rappers. And then the main thing that they have to maintain is authenticity. You know, this goes back to, to Biggie and goes back to Jay-Z and, and I guess maybe even goes back to Ice Cube when he was writing for Easy e you know, like, there's this like idea that you have to show you're authentic. And the way you show you're authentic is by saying things that only real crack people know. Only real crack dealers really know the real slang. So what ends up happening is that language just gets extended and stretched out to its, I mean, I'm a language professor. That is what I actually do. And, and what I love about hip hop is always the way that it takes the English language and stretches it as far as it can possibly go. It uses it rhythmically and musically, but just the slang upon layer of slang upon layer of slang, but the addition of this constant need to prove that you really know how to talk about crack, that you really know that you have to understand what it means to have an oven mitt, what it means to have Pyrex, what the baking soda means, what fish scale means, what blicky and bicky and fricky and bicky and zicky and wicky, and I don't even know what any of these words mean. I mean, half the time these things happen, I have to be there on Lyric Genius, and I have to, you know, click on the link and find out what it means, right? And on the one hand, I could just say, oh, well, this is just a bunch of hooey, you know? Who knows, right? But to me, I would much rather prefer to look at it like I'm an alien, like I'm somebody coming from a thousand years from now, like the way that I, that I read like medieval poetry, you know? And it's just like, what are, what, what is blictionary sling? 
I believe is a word that Boldy James says on this album. Those are words that he puts together. No, Brictionary Sling. Th those are words that mean something to, I assume, hundreds of people know what Brictionary Sling means. Maybe thousands of people. But there's something about this linguistic arms race with crack rap where you have all these people, you know, Freddie Gibbs and... Benny the Butcher, and, and, and it's, I think it's very much influenced by Ghostface Killer, the way that he showed you could really stretch language out and just be completely incomprehensible to 99% of the people and still be a good rapper, right? Just all these words coming together to the point where I listen to this album and it's just, I don't understand it. I know what it's about. The thing about Boldy James and that is, differentiates him from those other people, this guy, doesn't talk about anything but selling drugs. He doesn't even talk about remorse. He doesn't talk about his stuff. I mean, he mentions the wraiths and he mentions a watch once or twice. <laughs> but really, this album is laser focused on, on sort of the minutia and just the status of being a crack dealer, right? I like to imagine, instead of them talking about dealing crack, because that's so loaded sociologically and, and racially and the criminal justice system, you know, I like to imagine, you know, that they're, they're actually like, like they're, they're selling like stereo components, you know? Like they work at like a stereo shop, you know? And like all of this slang, you could do the same thing, but instead of like selling speakers, you know, you could say, you know, selling the box. And then the box gets mixed up and like you start calling it other things and you refer to wires as spaghetti. And all of a sudden you're talking about slinging spaghetti. And then all of a sudden, you know, like all these words and all these concepts, it's, it's, a, it's a playground for imagination. And I know I'm talking about the most devastating drug trade in American history, <laughs> right? The worst thing since the goddamn opium wars. But artistically, if we can divide ourselves from that fact, Boldy James is a great addition to this positively bizarre world of crack rap. What makes his style particularly interesting is he has such, okay, so this is the thing. Late, there's a lot of laid back rappers, but like that's their thing. Like, I'm just so chill, you know? He's so chill. Like, I get the sense that when he records his verses, he's like laying down on the couch. And it's like, hey, Boldy, are you going to get up? And he's just like, nah, it's cool. But he also is a never-ending stream of words. All of these abstract crack words, just one after the other. He's this bizarre combination of totally relaxed while completely spitting just fire after fire after bar after bar after bar. It's an amazing combination that I, I imagine, I, I don't know, but I imagine if you're a Boldy James fan, you might not have even thought about it that way because what makes him so interesting, at least to me, it took me a long time listening to this album over and over again to really understand what made it different. He doesn't enunciate particularly well. I mean, he doesn't mumble either. Like he's definitely not mumble rap. But you know, there's certain rap that I can play for my wife, English is not her native language, and other rap that I can't. And this is a good example where she just didn't make any of the words out, just absolutely none of them. So we get all these things, just great rhymes, uh, interesting rhymes, interesting brictionary slang, whatever that means. All that gets mixed up, and the way it's delivered is both very aggressive and extremely laid back at the same time. And the real question is, you know, do we need Boldy James to give us an excuse to listen to an entire album of Alchemist beats? <laughs> Another question, do we need the Alchemist just to justify our desire to have an entire album of Boldy James rhymes? When you ask yourself those questions at different times during the same album, that's a sign my friends, you have a good rap album, and that's what this is. Let me give you an example. I'm gonna pick a song out, kind of at random. I'm gonna pick the song Steel Wool, which is probably my favorite track on the album. I'll put a link to it up there. So if you don't know, I, I have people like go away from my video to listen to it and hear how it sounds. First of all, the Alchemist production, as always, is amazingly solid. I, 
like, how can you be so boringly awesome? You know what I mean? <laughs> like, he's always so awesome. He never misses. Every single beat is interesting, right? This cool kind of soul sample, this ooh wee ooh. And sometimes he lets the sample play out. Other times he lets like a pitched sample come in that provides like a piercing punctuation. It's just a, it's like a master class and just a simple, laid back, minimalist rhyme, I mean a beat where there's actually a lot going on. So it's not really minimalist at all, but it never sounds busy. And then just the opening lines, you know, just like the kind of rapping I'm talking about. Forges on that black Cherokee, that gangster slash pop mixed with trap karaoke. Turn the snow globe into a crystal ball. Now that dog, a 10. <laughs> is this Dada poetry? <laughs> it, is, is this, is he really talking about crack? I know that snow means cocaine, but turns a snow globe into a crystal ball, now that dog at 10. I, it's just beautiful, I love it. I love it. I don't, I mean, I, I, I get it. I know it all means something, okay? I'm sure there's a lot of people out there deep in the game or deep in the lore and they're like, Sky, you may be a professor of French, but you don't know shit about slang and cane and I definitely don't. <laughs> but to me, it's more interesting as just the most abstract wordplay you could possibly have. Turn the snow globe into a crystal ball. Now that dog a 10. True surrealist poetry. Then the chorus sample. He has choruses, but one thing I'll say about Boldy James, this dude does not care about your chorus. This dude does not care about a hook. He does not care about your pop samples. He doesn't even care enough about not being pop to mention that he's not being pop. He, he's very, very hardcore in that way. There's very little to like tap your toes and kind of sing along and even compared to like some Griselda stuff where they you know, sometimes try to have some kind of chorus. Like the chorus here is just an anti-pop chorus. And I'm just gonna read you the whole thing. I, I have to have my, uh, my coffee with me because it's, it's a long thing. And just an example of this weird abstract poetry. Half slab, golden retriever. This ain't no Purina. Black mag and the four fever. Brick of cocaina, stirring up the bricks, up in the pot, this ain't no farina. Stuffing 30 clips in my Glock, will switch your whole demeanor. Catch a body, no Randy Moss, I hike it off, hut one. These n's ain't cut from a cloth, a n, n cut from. I run with real wolves, real. Came from the real hood, uh-huh. These n ain't cut from my cloth, cause I'm steel wool. Beautiful. I am steel wool. This image of not being cut from the same cloth because he is that tough. I should have brought steel wool as a prop instead of just the oven mitt. <laughs> Anyways, you know, just uh, all these things like a half slab golden retriever. Just how do these words all go together? I love it. Even kind of a funny line in this song. Playing Tetris with these blocks. That's why they call me Lego. You know, I mean, at least that makes sense. Like I understand blocks. Like that's territory that you have to, to sell to sell coke. And really the song just shows so much of that relentless laid back flow. He just never stops. He's just, he's just, just line after line, after line, after line, after line, after line. And he's just kind of chilling on the couch while he's delivering them. There's a different outro and the Alchemist does this throughout the album, which is just his style. He'll just, I don't know, it reminds me a little bit of Timbaland because Timbaland used to always like extend out his beats at the end and give you something a little bit different that makes you go, ooh, maybe the whole song could be that. But in this case, the alchemists often just throw on an extra beat that I think is him kind of flexing, just sort of like, oh, this little thing that could be good enough for your entire album? Yeah, I just throw this on at the end of the song. Weird kind of 70s soundscape and then an interview with Bo Jackson by David Letterman is at the end here. Why Bo Jackson? Why does he call himself Bo Jackson? I don't, I have a theory. Bo Jackson played football and uh, baseball and Boldy James is a, is a drug dealer and a rap artist. I don't know, that's my best guess. Or again, it, it goes a little bit back to, uh, to, to one of the rap albums I, I reviewed last week, Dave East, where he takes on Hoffa. There's just not enough, like, like everyone keeps going back to the well with like Tony Montana over and over again. We need more figures. And so why not Bo Jackson? That's like a weird aspirational figure of just a total badass. Okay, I'm gonna go through the rest of the album a little bit quicker now. Uh, double hockey sticks, which is great. Like, I know what that means. So like when people talk about hell, 
they'll sometimes say H-E double hockey sticks. So he just calls the song double hockey sticks. So the amount of like context you need to understand this first line. This is the first line that starts off the whole album. On the H-E double hockey sticks, we keep a string. When it comes to creature biz, I make sure I keep in touch with poppy bricks. <laughs> like, I think if I started talking like this, people would think I was having a stroke, you know? We keep a string when it comes to creature biz. And I'm only emphasizing it over and over again because I just really want to make this point. Just how wonderful this is as a language. Just what the hell is everyone saying? A very relaxed piano sample. Really nice. Uh, Alchemist is his most uh, ambitious here, where he brings back in the, he brings the drums in and out kind of throughout the chorus, kind of you know, making us work pretty hard as an audience. Uh, makes reference to the Midwest uh, chain called Myers. I had a very good friend of mine who's from the Midwest, um, uh, who's from near Detroit, from Kalamazoo. And he had no idea that Myers was not a national chain. That's the only reason I know about Myers is because of Marlon. So there you go. I think he's a, a preacher now. He's an interesting guy. Um, then there's like a weird interlude where you hear his voicemail was like, you've reached Bo Jackson. And then the second verse is a totally different beat. Again, Alchemist is just coming straight out here, just like, hey, I've got so many beats, I don't know what to do. They just gave me my food. I'm chained to the radiator and to this computer, and I'm just gonna make another beat. Leads perfectly into the next song, Turpentine, Turpentine. Weird pitch sample, just another from the endless bag of Alchemist songs. Uh, he refers to himself as Bojack, which reminds me of Bojack Horseman. I don't think that's intentional. Um, another great example of the weird poetry lines of Boldy James. Ever since I lost my dog Trixie, shit be crawfishy. With that pixie dust, serve you with even hands. You remember Twin Peaks when they, when they go into that Red Lodge? I think this would, <laughs> that little person who talks backwards, with that pixie dust, serve you with even hands. Like, that's like the kind of clue you would get. What does that mean, serve you with even hands? Oh, like his hands aren't like shaking? Or is it odd and even? I don't know. Next song is called Brick Mile to Montana. A weird kind of X-Files, sort of like science fiction beat here. Uh, it's nice, a little bit breaking up this sort of all 70s, gauzy, smoky feeling. It's a little bit more there. Benny the Butcher opens up, which is nice. Is he redundant on this album? Is having another guy who almost only raps about crack there? No, it's great because his style's a little bit more aggressive uh, and I really like him appearing here. And as always, I love Benny the Butcher as a guest appearance more than, uh, more than as a solo artist. Although he wasn't on that song on Donda. He was the one member of Griselda not on that song. I wonder why. Um, <laughs> more boldy lyrics. Your mommy can't go to no churches. Ain't no ring around the rosy. Kirkland leaning off the stoli. F me with a adioski. Game time, arrivederci. Keep a pocket full of posies. Neighbors next door kind of cool. One's up the street kind of nosy. Hey, that actually sort of made sense. The next song is called EPMD. So what's going on here? Okay, Nas released his album last week. Um, by the way, for all of you, I said he was overrated. I didn't say he was bad. Nas is great. Nas is like half man, half amazing. I love Nas. I just happen to also think he's overrated. Do I need all the hate? Does that disqualify me from being a French professor who sometimes makes music videos about hip hop music as well as other kinds of music? I don't know. Anyways, I'll get into that later. I'm gonna do a top five MC video later. Nas is not on it. Um, and, and I'll talk more about that. But just, there's no hate for Nas. I just think he's a little bit overrated. Anyways, he has a song in his last album called EPMD2. So it's really funny, this song is just called EPMD. I don't think they're connected. I think he just uses EPMD because he refers to himself as being strictly business. But it's just funny to have him, have him back there again. Also, best Mickey Mouse placement in the history of music. Look at that. He's got a Mickey Mouse sweatshirt. You wanna know what hard is? Hard is being so hard that you can rock a Mickey Mouse sweatshirt and still look cool. <laughs> that, that is flossing, okay? That's, I'm just saying. Uh, 
anyways, this song is great. It's got this piano and this guitar interacting really nice in a loop. Alchemist just at the top of his game. Um, at a certain point, he brings in a, like a, a very far away sample from It's My Thing with the helicopters from EPMD. Just a very intentional kind of slight reference. I love it. I want more recognition for EPMD. Um, I mean, Eric B and Rakim and EPMD, it's, it, they sort of get credit, <laughs> kind of, but we should really be listening to them like all the time. You know, I mean, people who love hip hop, like they should be a lot more on rotation than I think they are. Next song is Steel Wool, which I've already mentioned. Uh, then Photographic Memories. And what I like about this, this is with Earl Sweatshirt um, and with Rock Marciano, is it's basically a posse track. Like it feels like that, it's just one beat all the way through, uh, but no chorus, very kind of odd vocal sample in the back, downbeat, 70s beat as always. Uh, but what I like about this is the, the, the verse by Boldy is fine, but Earl really nails it. Like Earl Sweatshirt has this verse where he very clearly is thinking about what's happening. So he actually, in his weird and kind of a different kind of laid back style, talks very clearly about Bo Jackson and is clear and is tied into the theme of Bo Jackson. And then he even makes reference to saying he might seem distant and reserved, which is the sample from The Alchemist. And I know I'm, the, I'm an old fashioned kind of guy, but I like it when guest appearances like work that hard. <laughs> you know, he's working really hard. Like, what's the beat? What's the name of the album? Bo Jackson? All right, I can write a couple verses about, I can write a verse about Bo Jackson. You know, I, I like that effort there. Um, Rock Marciano's on here as well. That's another rapper that I've been sleeping on. Those of you who might want to comment that, I know. Whenever he loses something and I see it, uh, I'll, I'll review it. Because I like these kind of weird high voice up here. Nice winding down beat leading into the song uh, Speed Trap, which is uh, kind of like Scarface style keyboards. Someday, I don't know when, but... Yeah, is it gonna be me? Crap. Well, somebody, I give this idea to you if you are a fellow music uh, guy. And maybe it's already been done. Tell me in the comments if it has. Oh, like my video, uh, subscribe to my channel, please. I like it when people do that. Um, someday, either I or someone else would just try to catalog the importance of the crappy soundtrack of Scarface on rap music. Because <laughs> the Scarface soundtrack is not very good, but it's very influential and it sets a certain tone. And there's so many songs where I hear it and I go, oh, that reminds me of that weird keyboard nightmare. But cool, like underwater, like drum beat here. I'd say this is, uh, th this is Alchemist at his most, uh, most avant-garde. He's like really trying to do different stuff, like, like moving around all sorts of different beats. Um, and it's, yeah, it's uh, just a really great beat. Diamond Dallas is another song. Makes me wish I didn't give up on wrestling. I gave up on wrestling in like 1986. And modern rap music just makes me think I should just really, to understand rap, forget knowing how to sell crack. I need to like understand the importance of like DDP and like Ric Flair. I don't really get it. Um, I do like that the uh, Stove God Cooks has the chorus, and it's just kind of a very simple, repeated lines, a great beat with this piano going up gently, just an incredible drum loop, great lines. Again, another one of my favorite incongruous, surrealist poetry from Baldy James. All my licks resemble Adam Sandler. All my licks. So I know enough to know that licks usually means liquor store. Liquor stores have usually talked about us being robbed. Adam Sandler is a comedian. Most famous opera man, Happy Gilmore, 51st Dates. What part of Adam Sandler has to do with a liquor store? I love it. I love not knowing. Please tell me in the comments, what the hell does that mean? All my licks resemble Adam Sandler. Or is he talking about licking? Mm -hmm. And it like, looks like Adam Sandler. Flight Risk, very cool dissonant piano sounds. Uh, in the beginning, like, bling, bling, bling. And then they turn into a loop that ends with that bling. Weird ooey ooey sounds. Alchemist, again, is just, I just, there's just, I, there's only so much I can say about how great his production is on here. 
uh, illegal search and seizure. I got tired of the album. I'm gonna skip this one. I like this album. It's good. It's maybe two songs too long. So I'm just gonna skip it. Uh, Fake Flowers, another gentle piano loop. Uh, Currency is on here. He's pretty good. But then Freddie Gibbs comes on, and this is just great because he. I think we need more Freddie Gibbs and Boldy James together because I mean Freddie. Um, What's astounding about him is his ability to, to, to alter his flow to different styles. He's more of an attacking flow. Um, and just the way he raps about crack is a different way. Like it's a lot more clear, um, but it's also maybe tied a little bit more into the sort of psychological ramifications of dealing crack. Again, Boldy James, as far as I can tell, doesn't rap about that. At least not on this album. At least not that I heard. Correct me if I'm wrong. I, I have authority as a professor of French, not as a hip hop commentator. <laughs> Um, Michael Jackson's not dead. He lives in my guest house. I just happen to like that line as well. A cool upbeat drum at the end. Uh, the, the third person is the next song. And this is, this is maybe a cliche now. I'm getting the feeling that a lot of these new hip hop albums that are superbly produced by excellent producers have like a ratio of like mostly piano beats and then one guitar song on each album. So I'm paying attention now. So you super producers out there, all right? If you're part of the whole Griselda underground, everything's awesome thing, just I'm paying attention to you. I'm pretty sure this is a new thing where one song you get some kind of crazy guitar lick song. I think there's even one at the end of Donda, now that I'm thinking about it, or at least based on the Donda, whatever it was we heard in Atlanta. I mean, that, that album doesn't even exist. But it's a very cool wailing guitar. First 48 freestyle. This is probably the clearest example of just the relentlessness of Boldy James. It's a beat that develops a little bit slowly as the verse goes, the drum starts to come in, the, it builds up, and then he just raps and just, you know. Um, you know that, I think it's a Dave Chappelle joke where he talks about like if, if comedians are like rappers, it's like jokes and jokes and jokes and jokes. Like, this is just like rhyme and rhyme and rhyme. And I guess that's the intent, right? Because it's supposed to sound like a freestyle. But he's just going and going and it never stops. And it's just all about selling crack and internet and like interstate crack deals and international crack, you know, like drug dealing and all this and just line after line. Parabellum in my nudies. That's what he said. That's what the man said. The man said, Parabellum in my nudies. I don't know what that means. I like it. All my licks are Adam Sandler. Parabellum in my nudies. <laughs> are you okay, Sky? Do you smell oranges right now? Uh, the final track is Drug Zone. Maybe the best beat on the album. This is the problem with Alchemist, is when you listen every time, you go, oh, best beat, <laughs> best beat. Uh, just this weird, like, kind of backward sound. It's just a very, very funky drum beat. Um, talking about the drug zone, which I think is kind of neat because, you know, like growing up, you always see drug-free zones, so that's not that. And then for one line, he talks about his mom's birthday being May 1st, May Day, International Day of, in recognition of labor, which we don't really celebrate in America. We've taken Labor Day, which is supposed to be about workers, and we make it about the barbecues and selling cars. Just think about that. We should also celebrate May Day. No American should work on May 1st, in my opinion. May Day is his mom's birthday, and he went to jail on that day. As far as I can tell, this is the only mention, and again, please correct me in the comments, because I act like I know everything, but I don't actually think I know everything. I'm pretty sure this is the only time we actually get a sense of any sense of remorse, and like, oh no, maybe I shouldn't be a crack dealer. And then a great outro again, where one more time, uh, he just says that he's, you know, um, where he, he just shows, Alchemist shows again, that he has more beats that he knows how to do with. So there you go. The, the oven mitt, he refers to himself as the king of the oven mitt. And I just thought that was funny. So I made a little thing. Let's see, it's the, he's the king of the, oven, of the oven mitt. My wife says that all my props are pointless and nobody cares about them. My wife is a lot smarter than I am. Uh, it is my weekend show, uh, so I am gonna thank my Patreons. I thank them all the time these days. Uh, they help me to buy music. Uh, 100% of the money that comes to me from Patreon, I turn around and I buy music from Bandcamp or from Amazon or from Record Archive in Rochester, New York, or from wherever I'm traveling. So thank you uh, for supporting all these people plus Milos um, because I like it. And uh, you know, you can, um, you can do that. All right, till next time, 
Uh, there's the camera.